So let's talk about proxy files. Now, if you're editing footage that was shot in say 4K or 8K or a higher frame rate to accommodate slow motion like 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, you might notice some issues when playing that footage back and thus have trouble rendering and working on it within your editor. Being able to generate proxy files is one of the key ways that you'll be able to actually transcode this footage down into a resolution and codec that you'll be able to work with and edit with smoothly and then be able to export it back into whatever resolution or frame rate you desired for it to be in in the first place. Now, I'm a Final Cut Pro user myself, and so there are a few keys and tricks to learn in terms of generating proxy files, which we're going to talk about here, but it's also worth knowing when you're going to want to create proxy files. So I wanna talk through the when and in what situations you'll want to do this before we even get to the how in this case. So here in Final Cut Pro, I've created a library and a project called Proxy Example, which we're going to use to demonstrate when you might want to create proxy files in the first place. So for this specific example, we're going to look at footage from a recent wedding I shot, and specifically three different kinds of footage from two different cameras in various frame rates and codecs that might have an impact in terms of us being able to edit this footage. So this first clip we have here in C1 was actually shot on my Sony a7 III in 4208-bit in 4K resolution in 24 frames per second. Now the second clip, which was also from the ceremony portion of the day, was shot on my Sony a7S III, also in 4K resolution and in 24 frames frames per second, however in 422 10-bit rather than 4208-bit. Now the third clip was also shot on my Sony a7S III, shot in 4K resolution, however this was shot in 60 frames per second, also in 422 10-bit. Now the reality is, while it might seem that these cameras are similar and that they were all shot in 4K resolution, just even choosing a different bitrate, say from 8-bit to 10-bit, or chroma subsampling from 420 to 422, or frame rate from 24 to 60 frames per second can make a difference in, in this case, my 2019 MacBook Pro's ability to edit and play back this footage smoothly. So as we play back through this footage here, you'll see the first clip is playing back pretty smoothly, I would say, rendering each frame by frame and really not dropping too many frames here. And so it seems like it can play back the A7 III for 208-bit footage in 4K24 pretty smoothly without any issues. Now, in looking at the footage from my Sony A7S III in 4K24, but 422 10-bit, you can see in this case, there doesn't seem to be any jumping or missed frames going on here as this is getting played back. So in this case, we might not have an issue editing this footage as well, potentially. However, where we're going to start seeing some jumping and issues is with this 4K 60 frames per second footage, which is just shot in a higher bit rate in general, and it's just going to contain a lot more information that this computer is going to have difficulty trying to unpack and play back. So as you can see here, as I'm attempting to play back the 4K 60 frames per second footage, this is not looking very good. We're dropping a bunch of frames. It's looking pretty jumpy. And my ability to attempt to cut this or render this up would be pretty difficult in Final Cut Pro as it stands right now. And yes, as one example, as you're seeing on screen right now, you might encounter a similar error in Final Cut Pro when you're attempting to play back footage that Final Cut Pro is having trouble itself rendering and playing back. So whether it's this explicit warning coming up and prompting you, or just you noticing a bunch of different dropped frames and the inability to be able to play back the footage smoothly, you should be able to know within Final Cut Pro and watching your footage back when you might want to and need to create proxy files. So since we now know when to create proxy files, the question might be, well, how do we accomplish this? So there's a couple of ways you can technically approach this within Final Cut Pro. Let's say we want to actually create proxies for the clips that we've already imported into our library and event. So specifically here, because our 4K24 4208 bit footage and our 4K24 422 10 bit footage seem to be playing back fine, I'm mostly only concerned with playing back our 4K 60 frames per second footage right now and making sure that we generate proxies for that. So let's just address this one clip as of right now. So to do that, I'm actually going to click on the source clip itself and you'll notice notice the option to transcode media. So when you click on this, you're going to have the option to create either optimized media or proxy media. As we've selected here already, we're going to create proxy media. So you'll notice we'll here either have the option to create a ProRes proxy or an H.264 based proxy for the codec. Now my preferred option for this is to choose ProRes proxy since ProRes just tends to edit like butter and is extremely smooth in Final Cut Pro, given that it is an Apple based codec and also choose the 50% option. So this is going to considerably shrink the size of our proxy files down. Now, of course, 
you can choose a smaller percentage or even up to a given resolution as another means of setting that. However, my take on this is up to a certain percentage. If you go too small, you're going to notice some pretty significant quality loss in Final Cut Pro when you're editing, and this might have a negative impact in terms of you being able to edit and work on the footage and color grade it and so on. So once we've set these options, we will just select OK. Now, of course, if we want to check on the status of our proxies and generating them, we can check on the background tasks area. Click that, and you'll notice the transcoding and analysis section. This will show us a list of all the single clips that we are making proxies for and report on the percentage of that as it's happening. One thing to keep in mind is that if you do start to try to edit and do things in the timeline while proxies are being generated, the actual proxy import and generation process will be paused. So you might actually want to allow some time for proxies to be generated for your project, especially if you're importing multiple clips. This is something you might want to let run while you go take the dog out or do the laundry or something to that extent. All right, and so as you can see, the proxy creation process for this particular clip is about to be complete. And so we should be able to check on things now in Final Cut Pro and see if we notice any difference now that we've created a proxy file for this particular large and difficult to playback clip. Now there are a couple of additional things here I do want to point out though. So if you're curious as to which clip has proxies created for it and which clips do not, what you'll be able to do is say if I click on this 4K24 10-bit422 clip that we didn't create a proxy for. Just within the info tab of Final Cut Pro, if I scroll down into the available media representations, you will see that proxy has a red dot next to it, as is optimized, which means in this case we have not made proxy or optimized files for it. However, if we select our 4K 60 frames per second clip that we just made a proxy for, when we look at its info tab, you will notice that proxy has a green dot next to it and actually shows that we've created a ProRes 422 proxy for this clip. So being able to check the info inspector is going to be one way that you can judge whether a clip has had proxy media created for it or not. However, what you're going to notice is when we're still trying to play this clip back is that we're still having many dropped frames and this is still having and showing difficulty in playing back the clip. In this case, within Final Cut Pro, we actually have to change one additional thing while we're editing to ensure that we're actually utilizing the proxies that we generated. So if we go up to the view tab here, you're going to notice a few different options in terms of media playback. Generally, what you're going to find is that Final Cut Pro is usually often set as a default to optimize slash original when playing back footage, meaning it is essentially using the full original files when it is playing back and rendering and when you're editing that footage. However, there are two additional options you can choose from when working with proxies, and perhaps one in particular that you may want to select over the other depending on your proxy workflow. What I'm going to first do is show what it looks like when I switch this over to proxy only. And what you're going to see is that suddenly these other clips we haven't made proxies for show that, well, we are missing proxies for these clips. If you choose proxy only, you will essentially have to ensure that essentially every clip you've imported into your library and your project is utilizing and has proxies generated for it. So this is only a viable option if you've decided to make proxies for every single clip within your project, and this may or may not be something you actually need to do. So there is one other option that you can choose, which is going to be more applicable in this particular case. In this case, if I go back to media playback, and instead of proxy only, choose proxy preferred, what you'll now see is we have all the different clips here shown and should be ready for playback. And we do not have any indication that any single clip is missing or that it cannot play back any one of them. This is because in proxy preferred, Final Cut Pro is going to use proxy files when it can and when they've been generated. And in all other cases, we'll just default back to the original media that was imported. So so now that we've set Final Cut Pro to use the proxies, you should see this playback a lot smoother. And of course, as we go back to the start of this file, as we start to play back this 4K 60 frames per second footage shot in 422 10-bit, you're seeing this is playing back super smoothly and correctly, just as we would have expected it to. And this is primarily and really solely because of the proxy that we generated for it. Now we did show how to take an existing file you've imported and create proxies for it, but what about if you're importing a net new clip or series of clips that you want to generate proxies for itself? In this case, we can just go up to the import window here and we will select a new clip that we'll want to create proxies for. Now, once we've selected that clip, much like we had in the option to transcode media with the file we already imported, you'll see a transcode section here in the media import window, and this will allow us as well to create proxy media. Again, I'm going to choose the same files that I did before, utilizing a ProRes proxy and 50%, and we will let this generate as well.
All right, and as the proxy file generation wraps up on this particular clip, let's test some things much like we did with the previous one. So since we've set this to proxy preferred, you'll notice this clip is now playing back very smoothly as we'd expect. However, if I were to instead change this again back to optimized media, you're going to notice the same drop frames issue we had initially with the other clip of the groom getting ready. And so again, this is why we're going to want to edit in proxy only if we've generated proxy files for essentially every single clip within our project and within the library, or we'll want to choose proxy preferred if we have sort of a heterogeneous mix of just original files and some proxy generated media. Now one last thing I want to call out is if you've set your project to either proxy preferred or proxy only and you attempt to export your project in this state, you'll notice that Final Cut Pro is going to give you a warning that you're still using proxy media and attempting to create an export using this would actually result in a degraded and reduced quality version. Therefore, you're going to want to make sure that you basically just set this back to optimized and original and let Final Cut kind of re-render this before you do your final export. Since as a quick example of that, if I switch this back to optimized and original, you will notice that I can now attempt to essentially export this and Final Cut Pro will not give me a warning of any kind. So in summary, that is a rundown on when you'll want to make proxies and how to do that in a couple of different ways in Final Cut Pro. Now hopefully this little tutorial has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it was. I'm definitely planning on doing more Final Cut Pro tutorials in the future and already have a couple on this channel that I will link to in the description below. That is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.